and hello and welcome to today's lesson <coughs> so today we are going to talk about complex differentiation okay. which happens to be a very foundational topic in the study of complex analysis so I'm Boido Randolph, a final year student of mathematics at the Kwame Nkuma University of Science and Technology and I'll be taking you through this lesson please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the youtube channel so you know we have complex numbers and we have real numbers and i know that's something that every math student knows we have real numbers and complex numbers and as a result we have real functions and complex functions so we've done lots of differentiations in various courses that we've done in calculus so in this particular course we are going to learn how to differentiate complex functions so we are no more going to do real functions but complex functions and the good news is that differentiating complex function is very similar to that of real functions so let's take a definition so complex differentiation so we see a complex valued function f of z is differentiable at a point z naught if the difference quotient as we can see here have a limit as z approaches z z naught okay so this happens to be the definition for complex differentiation so we can keep this right but there is an important formula that we have to know so the formula for the complex derivative at a point z naught is given by so f prime of z naught is equal to the limit as change z approaches zero then whatever we have here so if you can see what we have here very clearly you will see that this is very similar very very similar to the first principle rule that we are using for real function differentiation which was um f prime of a certain function x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero then you have f of x plus h minus f of x then all over h so you can see the only difference here is that we are replacing the x with z and of course at a point z no so that's why we have this here then the h is changing z and the rest is the same thing it's just that we have changed the s and the h i hope you see that all right so we were using this particular um formula here to find for the derivatives of real valued functions so in this particular video we are going to use this particular formula to solve or to differentiate complex valued functions so note this formula is very very important so now let's take some examples so we are taking the first example so the first example says we should find the derivative of the complex valued function f of z equals z squared at the point z naught so if i ask you to differentiate f of x equals x squared right you told me that this is 2x and it's correct so with this one so when you find the first derivative of this particular complex valued function here we have f prime of z will be equal to 2z but how do we show that using the formula for the complex derivative to recall that the derivative of a complex valued function at a point z naught is given by this formula here right but in this particular question our function f of z was equal to z squared so that means when you take this particular function here f of z naught plus change in z will give us what we have here because we have squared here so we have to square this right then the next thing is to expand so when we expand this we are finally going to get this then remember we have f of z here but z is being differentiated at the point z naught that's why we have the z naught here so 
that means our f of zero is supposed to be equal to zero squared, right? So right now we have this and we have that. So we just have to make substitutions. So we just have to substitute these two things inside our main formula here. So putting these functions into the formula for the complex derivative, we have what we have here. So now the whole of this, the whole of this, is our f of z naught plus change in z, and the whole of this is our f of z naught. So when we make substitution, z naught squared and this z naught squared goes away, right? Then we left it what we have here. So that's what you can see here. But with this, you should know that when you have something like a plus b over c, this is the same as a over c plus b over c. So that means what we have here can also be written as this over change in z and what we have here to over change in z. So you realize that this cancels this. Then we just have two z naught. Then one of this, we see we have twice here, but we have one here. So one of this will cancel this. Then we have plus change in z. But you should know the limit is as change in z approaches zero. So that means as change in z approaches zero, this thing is going to be zero. That's what we have here. And this is going to give us two z naught, right? So this is us showing that indeed the derivative of the complex value function f of z equals z squared at the point z naught is what we have here. So in conclusion, hence the derivative of the complex valid function f of z equals z squared is f prime of z naught equals two z naught. So let me bring at z naught s. So at this point is what we can see here. Alright so this is quite simple if you still have some difficulties at this point i would recommend for you to revise the first principle yeah it was taught in elective mass in SHS and in calculus in the university and you can't do differentiation without knowing the first principle right so let's take an example too which is a bit technical so it says the power function f of z equals what we have here has this particular derivative yes because we know that we only have f of x equals x m we find for the first derivative it will be what we have here m then times x then you take one from the power right so the power function this has this particular derivative so the question says we should show that right we are still going to show that using the formula for the complex derivative so you know we code the formula here right so when you code the formula here then you should know that we have f of z our function is f of z equals zm so that means that f of z plus change in z will be z plus change in z all power m what we have here but you know before we can expand this right before we can work on this we would have to use the binomial expansion for this particular function and just a quick introduction so you know when we have x plus y power m right using the binomial expansion it is given by s power m plus m times s power m minus 1 y going all the way to this so please, I want you to take a very critical look at this particular um, equation here because that is what you are going to use to solve this particular expansion. So let's move on. So hence, comparing the expansion of this to what we want to achieve in a question, then when you compare this here to the expansion that we've done here, right? then that means we are going to have this. So, please take your time and go through that. You realize that it makes sense and it's quite understandable. So, now that we are done with the expansion, then we can cut our formula here and make substitution. So, now when you are making substitution, the whole of this, 
is what we have here all right so we make that substitution and f of z is zm right so we write this particular equation here but you should know that this and this goes away so that means you're going to have the whole of this so that is what has been written here so with this you know we can divide you by changing z so we write it this way and then you realize that this change in z cancels this this cancels one of this and this also cancels one of these for us to get minus one here right so after doing that cancellation then we have what we have here but if you know that the limit is as change in z approaches zero so that means as change in z approaches zero every equation which contains change in z goes to zero so here we have zero because change in z approaches zero so we have zero times whatever we have here which would be zero then here too we have zero so that means we are just left with this one right so as change in z approaches zero then we have f prime of z equals m times z raised to the power m minus one and hence we have been able to show what we were asked to show so that's really the complex derivative it's very simple so as i've told you the most important thing for you to know is the first principle and try to compare it with the complex formula the formula for the complex derivative and everything is simple right so this is a work example for you to try your hands on so try and find the derivatives of the following complex valid functions and please use the um complex derivative formula to do it so for instance this your answer you're supposed to end up with 2z and